Hi guys, it is Tiny Little Whispers, A-S-M-R. So, I know that tomorrow is the 4th of July, and I found a case for you. So this case is about Sherry Ireleaf's disappearance. This case takes place in Salem, Oregon, which is just outside of Portland. It is about The year was 1982, and it was on July the 4th that a man was driving home with his sons. The man and his sons had, of course, been out celebrating the 4th of July. driving home from watching the fireworks, the man spotted a car still running with the lights on in the middle of the road. The man also that this car was a Domino's pizza delivery. Also found a name tag with the name Sherry. They soon found that the car belonged to an employee named Sherry Ireley, and she was nowhere to be found. Due to the circumstances found at the scene, the police believed foul play was involved. While investigating the scene further, the police also found a boot print located on one of the pizza boxes. They also 
also found tire marks located manager hung up with the guys and ended up sending Sherry to their location. The girl with the orange Volkswagen that Dunbar had requested to deliver pizzas was actually off on that night. She had Sherry, being a hard, dedicated worker, decided to take over her shift. Police quickly found that the address and callback number for the man
July the 6th, Dominus received another call from the man named Dunbar. This time he stated that he would return Sherry safely if the Dominus said he would call back within an hour with further details of where to drop the money off. The manager immediately called the police and they set up a wire tap. Unfortunately, Dunbar never called back with the additional information to where to drop the money off. The case started to grow cold, but then the police received a tip from a woman named Dawn. She said that her brother in law. Possibly the man who had kidnapped and abducted Sherry Irie. Her brother in law was named Daryl Wilson, and he supposedly drove an older truck just like the one in question. a truck driver, and he was also known to be addicted to acid, cocaine, and methamphetamines. The police questioned Daryl, and he stated that he did not know Sherry Irely. They asked if Daryl had met Sherry at dawn. But Daryl said he did not remember meeting the young girl. The police also asked Daryl why he painted his truck, and he said he just liked the new color better. They also asked where Daryl was located the night Sherry disappeared, and he stated he had been camping with friends the whole weekend of the 4th of July. He did not return to town until July 5th. The police decided been camping with. And unfortunately, they stated that Daryl had left on the night of the 4th of July and did not return until early the next morning. The police assumed that Daryl had enough time to go back to Salem.
police and spoke to Daryl again, and he admitted that he had lied about his alibi. This was possibly related to his drug usage, but Daryl refused Cold case group noted that Daryl had only had minor drug offenses in his past, and they believed that whoever abducted Sherry Hirely had probably committed a more serious offense, very similar to her case in the past. Cold case group decided to look for similar disappearances around the Salem area. They found that exactly a year and a half after Sherry disappeared, another woman named Katie Redmond had gone missing after a sorority. She had left the party around 2 a.m. And later, her car was spotted running in the middle of the road with Katie nowhere in sight. A few days later, Katie's body was found dumped near a river that was close to her abduction. The police actually caught Katie's killer, and this man was named William Scott Smith. He was convicted on July 1984 for the murder. In 
initially when speaking to the police, William stated that he did not abduct Sherry and that he was nowhere near Salem the weekend of the 4th of July. William said he had been driving trucks up in Washington the weekend of the 4th. The police were unable to confirm his alibi, and without any direct physical evidence, they needed a confession. The police searched old records and found that William Scott Smith had been pulled over and questioned just several hours after Sherry's disappearance the night of the 4th, and he was well within range of Salem. This blew William's alibi out of the water. The police contacted William's cellmates and asked if he ever spoke of Sherry's disappearance. His cellmates stated that William had said he was involved with the disappearance of a pizza girl. He never listed Sherry by name, but would call her the pizza girl. Police were eventually William stated clearly he was involved in her disappearance. When the police spoke to him, he would still not admit to kidnapping Sherry, but the police finally offered to transfer William to a new prison if he would confess. And at this point, William confessed to the abduction of Sherry Ireley. He said that he had been with a friend named Roger, and they had called Domino's Pizza that night. He said they waited for the delivery girl to arrive, then flagged her down the ones that had ordered the three pizzas. At this point, Sherry had gotten out of her car with the pizzas when William and Roger overtook her and placed her in William's truck. William was able very aware that he was the killer. William Scott Smith then said that Sherry was not even the woman they had planned on abducting. They had met the other pizza girl at another point in time, but since she was not and Sherry had taken her shift. She was unfortunately the one who ended up getting kidnapped. William said they took Sherry back to his parents' home. And from there, he took her down to the edge of the river and killed her. Unfortunately, the man named Roger, who was
William said was his co-worker that evening had died a few months earlier. The police then searched the river area while William said he had placed Sherry's body, but unfortunately due to over 20 years passing and some flooding in the area, her remains have never been found. William pled guilty to her murder, and as he was already receiving three life sentences, he remains in prison. So pled guilty to murdering another woman. So I hope you guys enjoyed the case this evening. I'm very thankful that William is behind bars for life, but it is such a devastating case for Sherry Ireland. this case related.